Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our devotion, uh, the second in this short series where we are looking at uh, another forgotten virtue, uh, that of humility, which, as we know, is the opposite of pride. And so today we're just going to look at the question of where pride come fr come, comes from, uh, the origins of pride. And to understand this, we need to go back to the prophecy of Ezekiel. And through his prophecy, we are able to know things that happened in the past. Prophets did not only reveal the future, but the past as well. The primary sin of man originated in pride. This pride that led to rebellion. The first sin also took place in heaven, not on earth. It was committed by an angel, not a human being. It was born out of a pride that exalted this angel ironically as a result of the very wisdom and beauty that God had given to him. And so let's read Ezekiel 28, 11 to 17. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, This is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You are in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Ruby, topaz and emerald, chrysolite, onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade you were filled with violence and you sinned. And so I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, a guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and, your, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So here we meet the prince or the ruler of the city of Tyre. And then in these verses we meet the king of Tyre. The first person is clearly revealed to be a human being. But the second, the king of Tyre, is not a human being. He's clearly a fallen angel. Verse 12 says that he excelled in wisdom and beauty, was in Eden the garden of God. He had a special position of honor in heaven, directly in God's presence. Verse 14 says that he was a guardian cherub. So he guarded almost like the gates of Eden. This cherub, whose name at the time was Lucifer, the bright one, or the morning star, was in charge of one third of God's created angels. And although he was so wise and beautiful, he was not content with his position of submitting to God. And he believed that he should be equal to God. And so he began to stir up rebellion among the angels in his charge. And then this way, Lucifer promoted rebellion against God, and they were ultimately driven out from the presence of God due to their rebellion. In the light of what we're talking about, we need to understand what is at the root of this rebellion. The scriptures even say it was pride. Now, how do we know this? Well, we also know it from an equivalent passage in Isaiah 14. So let's read Isaiah 14, 13 to 15. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. His beauty and wisdom caused his pride, which resulted in rebellion. And so he exalted himself. And in the words of Jesus, he who exalts himself will be humbled. And so the root of pride is the very I in pride. Notice how many times it appears in this one passage. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. It is the will of the creature in opposition to the Creator that is the essence and root of the whole problem. And the motivation is pride. The action is rebellion. So what was the ultimate aim? Well, that goal is expressed very clearly in the fifth I will statement. I will make myself like the Most High. 
The creature wanted equality with the creator. And so he exalted himself. And as a result, he fell. Now, we don't refer to this being as Lucifer. We refer to him as Satan or the devil, the adversary, the resister, the rebel against God, the one who resists God's purposes and God's people everywhere in the earth. And so the conclusion of this account is how pride and rebellion can turn the greatest into the least. Those who are once for God into those who oppose God and his purposes. Yah is someone who was the wisest and most beautiful of God's creatures. But when his heart was filled with pride, he turned against God in rebellion. He fell. Again, Jesus' words, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. We see from Lucifer's fall that the law regarding pride and humility operates not merely in our own human lives, but also throughout the entire universe. It affects every created being that is capable of responding with either pride or humility. And so on that note, we get a close. And next time we will look at how this whole idea of pride and the origin of pride move from the spiritual realm, from, from Satan, into the human realm in the Garden of Eden. Lord, we just pray that you would just open our hearts, receive your word, that we would understand how important this subject is for you, that every sin is rooted in pride. And Lord, if we can get a handle on pride, we can get a handle on so many of the other things that are wrong in our lives. Continue to teach us through these lessons, we pray. We just give this day to you. May we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, that you might lift us up. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.